I'm Dr. Ken Bailey and privileged to again be sharing with you on the great theme of the images in the New Testament for Christian leadership. And as we saw already in our first two studies, we are dealing with topics in which or images that begin as images for God, become images for Jesus, and then finally become images for Christian leadership. This is profoundly the case with the symbol that is now before us, and that is the Good Shepherd. God is the Good Shepherd, Jesus is the Good Shepherd, and Christian leadership are meant to imitate the models that are set for by Jesus and set for also as we discuss God the Good Shepherd. And we have to look briefly at all three of them. We have two sessions. The first one will focus primarily on God and Jesus. The second one on Jesus and early Christian leadership. About a hundred years ago, the catacombs underneath the Vatican were discovered. They were early Christian burial grounds. And at that time, the international Christian art scholars were quite amazed at the images that they found in those catacombs. <clears throat> and a great deal was written about it at that time. And there was an American scholar by the name of Philip Schaff, who at that time was writing a series of books on the history of the church. And he talks about this discovery and he writes as follows. Roman Catholic cemeteries are easily recognized by crosses, cru crucifixes, references to purgatory, and prayers for the dead. Protestant cemeteries, by the frequency of scripture passages in the epitaphs and the expressions of hope and joy in the prospect of the immediate transition of the pious dead to the presence of Christ. The catacombs have a character of their own, which distinguishes them from Roman Catholic as well as Protestant cemeteries. Their most characteristic symbols and pictures are the Good Shepherd, the fish, and the vine. These symbols almost wholly disappear after the first century, but to the mind of the early Christians, they vividly expressed in childlike simplicity what is essential to Christians of all creeds, the idea of Christ and his salvation as the only comfort in life and in death, the shepherd, whether from the Italian or the Galilean hills, suggests the recovery of the lost sheep, the tender care and protection, the green pasture, the fresh fountain, the sacrifice of life, in a word, the whole picture of a savior. In the same book, Schaff puts in a quotation from the then Archbishop of Canterbury, late 19th century, whose name was Stanley, who wrote on the same subject as follows. What was the popular religion of the first Christians? It was, in a word, the religion of the Good Shepherd, the kindness, the courage, the grace, the love, the beauty of the Good Shepherd was to them prayer book and articles, creeds and canons, all in one. They looked on that figure and it conveyed to them all that they wanted. As ages passed on, the Good Shepherd faded away from the mind of the Christian world, and other emblems of the Christian faith have taken its place. Instead of the gracious and gentle pastor, there came the omnipotent judge, or the crucified sufferer, or the infant in his mother's arms, or the master in his parting supper, or the figures of innumerable saints and angels, or the elaborate expositions of the various forms of theological controversy. I'm a one-person campaign to try and restore the symbol of the Good Shepherd back to the life of the church. Because you see, the earliest churches in the Middle East, they could not worship facing a cross because a cross for them was an instrument of torture that the government used to kill criminals and prisoners. It's like asking the French to worship facing a guillotine, or perhaps the Americans could worship looking at an electric chair. You just can't do it. So that wasn't any good. After Constantine and the coming of the Christian faith as the faith of the empire, then crucifixion was outlawed and gradually the, the grisly side of crucifixion disappeared and it was possible for it to become a symbol. What did the church use for the first 300 years as a symbol to focus their mind on the central reality of the cross? It was, interestingly, the Good Shepherd. 
they know that the sheep, if it's not picked up out in the wilderness and carried home, it's going to die. And they found in that restoration of the sheep back to the village, the symbol that they could understand that would pre present to them the, the reality of Christ and his cross. Well, where does the symbol of the shepherd come from? When we look at the Old Testament and take a quick view through all of the Psalms, and if you ask yourself, what are the major images that appear in the Psalms as images for God? And you quickly get a list, and the list is shield, high tower, fortress, high place, refuge, rock, stronghold, horn of salvation. And sometimes three or four of these occur in the same psalm. They are, if you please, homeland security language. They can, that's fine, it's okay, we still pray these, and that's fine, no problem. And Martin Luther set, wrote a great hymn about a mighty fortress is our God. But they can produce a sort of a mentality of paranoia. They're trying to get us. We've got to withdraw up at the fortress on the top of the hill, and then we'll be safe. It is very interesting that none of these image, um, images, I mean zero, appear anywhere in the New Testament. Are these the only images that we have in the Psalms about the nature of God? No, there are three others. One of them is the good shepherd, and the second is the good woman, and the third is the good father. Well, so when Jesus is challenged about the nature of his ministry, and why are you, a rabbi, eating with sinners and outcasts, types, and he says, I'll tell you a story, but the story is actually in three parts, and it's a story about a good shepherd and about a good woman and about a good father, and this is not by mistake. The same research that I did in the Psalms, Jesus had already done, and he opted for the minority point of view. He opted for the countercultural point of view, and the first of these is the story of the Good Shepherd. Now, I've, um, I've written just a little from, I got a little snippet from somebody else, but basically I rewrote it. I rewrote the 23rd Psalm, and I call it the 23rd Channel, and it reads as follows. The TV is my shepherd, I shall not want. It makes me to lie down in the reclining chair. It leads me away from truth, beauty, and goodness. It destroys my soul. It leads me in the paths of sex and violence for the sponsor's sake. Yea, though I walk in the shadow far from faith, there will be no interruption, for the TV is with me. Its cable and its remote control, they comfort me. It prepares a commercial before me in the presence of my worldliness. It anoints my head with materialism. My covetousness runneth over. Surely laziness and passivity shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house forever, mesmerized by the TV. Now, you could do with that whatever you want to, but that's kind of where popular culture is in our world. 